Oh my goodness, you caught me in the middle of going to see one of my favorite authors. I'm so excited, I can't wait to get there. Well, hope to see you there. If not, I'm taking pictures and maybe doing some filming. Well, I went and I was inspired. See, take a look. Wanting to write is not the same thing as being a writer, but if you set pen to paper, if you set fingers to keyboard, if it's a journal, if it's a poem, if it's a short story, if it's an essay, you are writers. And then the next thing you have to embrace about yourself is that the path you have set out upon is going to be a difficult one. It almost makes me laugh that people have the impression that they can get rich being writers. Now I think that's because they see the bestsellers and you know you've got all the, the authors they come on Oprah. Some of them are rich, not all of them. Not every writer who's been on Oprah is rich, believe me. That was a big shiny moment, but that moment fades as there's money in the bank account. So, uh, writers don't become rich. You don't write because you want to become rich. But if you write from your heart and soul, if you write a story that is uniquely yours, if you write a story that challenges convention using those critical thinking skills, you may touch and move enough people that they will buy enough of your books that you may accidentally become rich. But that's not how you should set out upon the path. That is, a, that is definitely the approach that would be the most fraught with keen, keen disappointment. That before you can become a writer, you have to wallpaper your wall with rejection slips. And I have to tell you that is probably the single most important piece of advice I have ever gotten about writing. Because when my rejection slips started coming, instead of, oh, they don't want it, I was like, ooh, look, it's the first one. <laughs> I put it up on the wall. Ooh, look, it's the second one. So I was on my way, building my wall of rejection slips. I didn't even fill up my door with rejection slips before I sold well, when I say sold, I don't mean they paid me or were going to pay me, but when you sell a short story, that means they were going to send you contributors' copies. In the days of the internet, I guess they give you the URL. I don't know what they give you now. But uh, that magazine went out of business before they could publish my short story. <laughs> so that was a real disappointment. That was a real setback for me. I thought I was on my way. And then it was back to the rejection slip. Back to, you know, shoot. My last rejection slip before I sold my novel was from one of the local colleges in Miami and I thought I would, I would walk in there because I was writing for the Miami Herald. I had a column. People knew my name. People recognized me in places I didn't want them to recognize me. So I thought I would use that name and tell a story. They weren't even going to pay anything and they said, no, what? I couldn't believe it. I was so dejected. And if I had gone by that, I would have thought, you know, maybe this writing thing isn't for me. But I had written a novel called The Between, which had already been rejected once, actually twice, once by an agent in New York, once by a screenwriting fellowship in L.A. I didn't want to be a screenwriter, I just needed a deadline. And they had a deadline, and they accepted novels, so I submitted it, and I didn't win. And if I had just paid, you know, I, I was starting to forget my teacher's lesson about wallpaper in the walls, I was starting to take it personally. I was starting to think, ooh, maybe I don't have it. And two weeks after that rejection slip from the local college, my agent sold the between. 